no slumber watch over your lives in the name of Jesus. I said, may the Lord who watches over his people watch over Zion trumpeters in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You cannot just release yourself to be an instrument, a vessel of the almighty God and your life remain the same. So I want to assure you, your time to see the glory of God in your life is here with us. And nobody who steps in this altar will remain the same again because we are in a new dawn. The dawn is already awake and the glory is already awake. Praise be to God. Can you turn to your neighbor to the right and to the left and give that neighbor a high five and tell your neighbor, neighbor, it is time to move forward. It is time to move forward. It is time to move forward. I sent from the morning service uh, by the grace of God and to the glory of the name of God, today I'll be very prophetic. So I want to assure you, if you miss what God is doing today, it will cost you five years to recover. So you better be attentive. You better be alert. I heard very clearly and uh, what I'm talking to us what I'm speaking to every one of us, it is the will of God for you and for me. That is why God is speaking the way he is speaking. The Lord said, I should come and tell the church. So there's not a message for the crown. There's the message for the church. Ask your neighbor, are you a crown or you are a church? <laughs> crowd does not understand the language of heaven. The crown does not connect with the great I am that I am. But the church can hear because the Bible says, my flock, my sheep, hears my voice. So this is the message of the flock. This is the message of the sheep. And the sheep know their shepherd. So today, there is something that the Lord is doing. He told me, tell my church, it is time to move forward. And I said there are things that marks your life when you are not moving forward. Backwardness in life, stagnation in life will weaken you. Nobody who is stagnated is strong. Nobody who is Backward, or who is moving backward, is strong. So, when you are not moving forward, I send you are, you are in a place where your influence is challenged. Your confidence is challenged. Even if you are so great and you are dent to be great and your greatness has not manifested, you are challenged when it comes to the matters of confidence. When you are not moving forward, you are ashamed. Am I talking to us? You are ashamed. Your performance is interfered with and your life is limited. There are things that you cannot enjoy. Limitation is one thing that shows that your life is not progressing. When you are moving forward spiritually, you have a spiritual flow. And how can you tell that you are having a spiritual flow? Your relationship with God, your intimacy with God, your fellowship with God grows day by day. Your love from God grows day by day. Your prayer life flows. You, 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 you don't meet yourself in a place where the spirit fire 
in you is quenched. So every time you are on fire from God, every time you are in a high spirit from God, and this is where God is calling us. Maybe you are praying three minutes and you are done. But I want to tell you, God is lifting you into another level of prayer life. When the disciples were accompanying Jesus, especially during the time when he was nearing the cross, let me tell you, when you are nearing the cross, your friend, your association is affected. Not many people can follow you to your cross. Because cross is a, a place of shame. Cross is a place where you give up on other things and you're just there to do the will of the Lord. And not many people can accompany you to do the will of God. As Jesus neared to the cross, even his own disciples, they left him. And now, shortly before that night when he was arrested, he went with his disciples in the mountain so that they can stand with him. And the Bible says he went and distance at, 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 at throw away stone to pray. But when he came back, he met the disciples, they were asleep. He woke them up and he asked them, can't you stand with me even for an hour? They were not ready. Jesus looked at, unto them and he said to the spirit is willing, but the flesh, the flesh is weak. So there are times, there are days when you can be very willing, but if you are not commissioned to move forward in life, you meet yourself. The results are the same. And in life, if the results are the same, if you're not making any progress to improve when it comes to your result, even if you are in school, the result is the same. Not unless you are topping up. And even if you are topping up, you should not maintain the same result. You should improve on results. Tell your neighbor you should improve on results. If you are not moving forward, you tend to be a frustrated creature. Many people, many believers in salvation, they are so frustrated. They are so disappointed. That is why the love from God has has already grown cold to, to, to so many people. And now, the Bible reckons in the book of Exodus, Exodus, Exodus 14, verse 15. When the children of Israel were being pursued by their enemies, Moses turned to the Lord to cry unto the Lord on behalf of people. Always thank God if you have a Moses who can cry to the Lord on your behalf. Many of us, we don't value our Moseses. But I want to tell us, there are battles that you cannot fight. There are avenues that you cannot cross until Moses speaks, until Moses clears and makes a way. He cried, but now God is appearing to him and he told him, the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Tell your neighbor it is your time to go forward. And I said, the way naturally we have the time to govern our lives. Here in this church, in our two worlds, we have the war clock. That is why people who are not deep and they, are, they don't have the urge and the desire of the word of God as the minister, ministers, 
their eyes are on the clock because they have other programs. They have other sketches. I said and I want to remind us that there is the clock of destiny. Tell your neighbor there is the clock of destiny. There is the clock of destiny. And we have come to a time and to a season where God has purposed to come and do something to the clock of the destinies of his children. Manipulation can tamper with your season. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt in Numbers 22, Moabites and other nations, they were scared of them. Tell somebody you are not a simple person. You are a system. Can you take me there? They were fearing. And this is how the king, then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plain of Moab on the side of the Jordan across Jericho. Now what happened? Now Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel and Dan to the Amorites. Let me tell you, you may think the enemies have not been watching you. You may think nothing is happening in your life. But let me tell you, the small things that you're seeing in your life, they have been marked by the enemy. Some of us, you may think that you are just a normal individual. But let me tell you, the terror of God, the terror of God is scaring some people because of your life. There are people who have seen, you are seeing a small business. But there are demons, there are witches, there are men and women who think that they are the controllers of the city. They have already noticed that you are taking over. You may think you are a simple person in that institution. But Amans are always disturbed by the presence of Mordecai sitting at the gate. A man was so much irritated by the presence of Mordecai. Mordecai wearing a security uniform. But because he knew who he was, you might be at the gate, but you are not there permanently. Hey, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I am not where I am permanently. Tell your neighbor I am not in this level permanently. Ambio yo mutu unaweza nitafuta kesho hapa nipo ukinikosa ujue Bwana amenishughulikia. What an yo yo ne wito. What an yo yo ne wito. my nore now, Mordecai would not give a salute to this event. He would not bow. He would not open the gate and bow because he knew he was the son of the covenant. Children of the covenant don't bow to situations. Children of the covenant don't bow to challenges. Children of the covenant don't bow to problems. They don't bow to the intimidators. Mordecai knew his stand and he knew it is for a matter of time. I am coming out. I am moving forward. I came to tell you by the name of God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, you are moving forward. Your family is moving forward. Your dream is moving forward. Your vision is moving forward. Your children are moving forward. I declare it is the time to move forward. I don't care who said you'll never move forward. I don't care who vowed. I don't care who stood and said you are going nowhere. 
I came anointed for this purpose. He was very mad. He was very mad. But God, who is that God? Who is this our God? He is the giver of victory. He is the giver of time. He is the giver of seasons. And as I stand before the presence of the Most High, the clocks of the destinies of the people of God here, you are starting to ah, uh, you are starting to move forward. You, hey, I said you are starting to move forward by the grace of God and no power, no demon. Balak called Balaam so that he can curse the children of God because their presence. God is about to give you another kind of of identity. Amen. God is about to reveal even to your enemies who you are. God is about to reveal even to your unbeloved who you are. And they will know that you are not confused as they thought. They will know that you are not lost as they thought. They will know that God is on your side. So Balaam was hired. Let us read a few verses there. I love, I love, I like flowing the, the way of the spirit. Now, so Moab said to the elders of Midian, now this company will leak up everything. When you begin to move forward, you start leaking up everything. You begin to take over. You begin to take territories. I say you begin to take territories. You, hey, you begin to possess Let me tell us this. Right now, if you go in many parts of this nation, men who controls the system and the economy of the nation, they have leaked up. And when they leak up, they leave a mark. So I want to tell you when you when you when you begin to move forward, you leave a mark. Let me give you an example. There are many petrol stations here in Kenya. They started to buy Keno petrol stations. And they were all branded as rubies. We don't know even the meaning of that word, rubies. Now they are buying almost every other station. When you go, you meet rubies, 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 rubies. And when you follow, you meet the cartels of the nation. They are the custodians. But let me tell us, when God begins to release his children, when God gives you a forward move, you cannot be resistant. So moving forward breaks resistance. And I want to declare by the authority of the word of God, this time you are breaking barriers. This time resistance is bowing. Ah, ah, I, I, I said if you miss this, it will cost you five years. Mark my words, read my lips, five years. prophetic wand. <laughs> I know what I'm talking. One man of God. We met with him some years back. We are sitting here. We decided to go somewhere in this town. Take lunch together because he was our guest. When we went there, as we started to move, the Lord started to reveal to me the next nine years, that man, when we arrived in the cave, then there were no, no cross, no nothing. We sat there. The Holy Spirit started to speak. The man of God sobbed like a baby. He could not eat. 
there is a revelation that God reveals. And you tell that person, when this happens, remember me. Those are the ones you, you talk to this man of God. When this happens, do not forget us. The way Joseph spoke. Now, the word was put into a test. The man of God went through a very little financial challenge. He forgot what God spoke. In divergent from the cause. And he started ways of how he can make up, make it in life. He started to call. Please, that is not the way. Go back to the way. He started to show that what he is doing is right. The Lord told me, stop. Leave him alone. Even when I reveal something to you, don't tell him. Because he has entered into seven years of his own grace. I told my husband, Minister so and so has stepped into seven years of his own grace. So he has to struggle for seven years. Immediately after three and a half years, the Lord spoke to me. I called the wife. No, 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 no. I called the man. I told him this is the instruction of God. This is the three, uh, you, are, you, are, you are in your, the third and a half year, you need to arise. And he said, exactly, exactly, exactly. When I try to look back, I, I can see I'm, I have struggled for three and a half years, blah, 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 blah. He spoke. But I told him, this is the instruction. Go and meet your father in the Lord. So that he can bless you. He didn't take it. I called the wife one night. I was here in the office praying alone. I, I told the wife, can you, can you wake up and pray for your husband? Because this, is, this and this is about to happen. The wife woke up praying, but the man never changed. So, three more years, because I was dealing with that last year. Three more years! He is still under his own grace. He is struggling. Whatever he is trying to do, nothing is working. Big project, big visions, nothing is materializing. So I'm telling you, if you miss this, five years. This ministry, the Jezebel spirit that fights a prophetic ministry has already been destroyed, has already been arrested because the, prof the Jezebel spirit works in three dimensions. Dimension number one, to frustrate the vision carrier through even the church members so that the vision carrier will compromise. If the vision carrier does not compromise, then Jezebel spirit can even kill the visionary. Number two, because Jezebel spirit will always use witchcraft. Even church members themselves, they can turn to be witches. When church members turn to be witches, they will never speak well of their church. They will never speak well of their pastor. Am I talking to us? Number three, Jezebel's spirit always kills the true prophet. It manipulates, elevates falsehood more than the truth. And now, when it uh, attacks the ministry, people will come, they will be taught, they will never apply anything. You teach powerfully on Sunday, by Monday, nobody is holding that truth. It manipulates and seduces. That is why some prophetic ministries, right now, there is that tsunami in the body of Christ, many pastors are remarrying through sexual morality, 
A woman can come to church anointed directly from hell to deal with the anointing, to bring down the anointing. There are some men of God that I know. May God remember them. May God save them. Right now as we speak, even I am shaking when I'm talking about it. They have married a second wife. And some of them, they are marrying ushers. They are marrying prison worship people. They impregnate them and they come. One saying, I am a prophet. And this young lady, the lady was eight months pregnant. The baby that she is carrying is my baby. I am a prophet. I am a divinant of my days. And if anybody leaves the church, I will curse you. If <laughs> an undaughter is an undaughter, even if he is a prophet. An undaughter cannot curse you and be cursed. If you speak against her, if you speak against me, I will curse you. And the first wife was dumped in Ushaks. Stay there. You kill of the vision. Some of them, we have sat with them. We have fellowshiped with them. But because Jezebel spirit is a killer, she has just messed them. Oh God, I pray for their restoration. Lift up your hands. Pray for the men of God who are under the attack of Jezebel's spirit. We lose, we lose your servant. And from this altar, we scatter and arrest and destroy the Jezebel spirit in Jesus' mighty name. That is spirit will permit some places a prophetic ministry church to have all kind of members but they cannot support the vision so pastor will struggle alone with the vision you'll be talking to people they look at you our money my money no They are not interested. So pastor won't be struggling alone with the vision. That is where many of them are compromising. Right now as we speak, many pastors are sick. Many pastors. A survey was done. Out of five, three pastors. And pressure, low eye, on diabetes. Why? Many of church members, they all come, download their problems to the man of God or to the woman of God. And you come and sit in the office. <laughs> My problem, I don't know where to start. Innocently, the man of God tells you, start where God is helping you. You start your story from 1980. Two hours of downloading your problem to that individual. Another one calls, tells the pastor. My marriage is breaking. My husband has left me. My children, my thirst. Before pastor goes to bed, he is sick. And no church member will stand to pray for the man of God. I told you, I believed it. When my husband, who is our father of faith, was attacked. In his health. That is the time I believed that members do not pray for their pastor. I went through a situation that even my children never knew. At times they were asking me, Mom, these days you have become a driver for our daddy. Daddy, you can drive. They never knew that their father was blind. He could not see. Nobody knew in the house. I would rush him the hospital to be stabilized. Then he comes here to preach. As he is preaching, I am interceding so that he cannot fall on these steps. Nobody knew. 
I turned to be almost everything in the church. I would come preach, minister to Kesha, because I'm telling him, sweetie, please, 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 by the grace of God, I am your helper, just stay home. Please, just relax. One day I drove from Topa to Moranga, carrying a very weak man, sick. I came throughout the wilderness, speaking tongues, shaka batarabaraba, I told God, God, I pray that no policeman stops me on the way. Because if they would see that man, he was very weak. I stretched the con driver's seat. I told him, just lie down here. Lie down here. He came. Our second stopover was Kim Khan. Nobody, even those you say here, the intercessors, nobody detected and asked him, ma'am, what is going on? After that, we had a meeting in Eldoret. By that time, he became totally blind. It was my first time to drive to Eldoret. I took the car. We went. We were with another man who had invited them to more University. We are driving there. The young man does not know I am carrying a blind man of God. I was very keen. Any time he's walking, I am just next there because he may slip and fall. So, when we dropped this man, my, my honey would not tell where we are. I don't know Eldoret. Namuliza sweetie tuko happy. Ananiambia sioni kitu naona mata ya kiwa makubwa, mata ya magari. I cannot tell. We went he ministered in that campus that night. He would not even read <laughs> the Bible when it is put on the screen. He ministered like a manned man, the lion of the tribe of Judah, roaring. And the following day, I took him to a couple's seminar. I was interceding. I was telling God, help him not to fall. He would tell a person, read for us. Genesis, this and this. So people thought that is the version of the man of God to preach. That is why the Bible says, be rich with the man of God. He ministered. And I remember the wife of that pastor asking me, ah, you're the one who is carrying man of God. I told him, I told her, yes, I am the helper. They don't know what I'm going through. They could not tell what I was going through. After that, I took him to a conference in Meru. That is the time God opened his eyes when he was ministering in a conference. That was not a demon. It was a self-propagated problem. Because we invited a preacher here, sometimes back. And the preacher, after ministering, he would tell us, I need an energy drink. So, we would send some people, we would rush we buy bull, yeah, shark. And from there, because of many programs that we had, from one station to another, from one program, from one radio to another, we started taking energy drink like mad people. Because we are driving at night, when you take an energy drink, you become alive. And so, even in my fringe, energy drinks were just packed there. And I would serve him two glasses. Kunyo igine. I mean, kunyo kanusu apo. Kumbe, it affect lungs. Tapatali ato ukikuta kwa njia. Ato ukikuta. Na kutanga mtu wakinunua supermarket. Karibu ni yete muambie usinunue. Ambie muenza kwa energy drink. Kachana na yo. Kwa sababu, you are digging your own grave. I know the young man. The young boys. Even my son met me. I think it was yesterday. Somewhere in our shop. When I was coming from seminar. So I asked him, where are you coming from? He told me it's Castori. Then he goes to the fringe because he knows mama is here. <laughs> the fringe of that shop took something that looked like Sonda. I asked him, what is this? And you see they are written different demonic names. Monster, beast, bull, killer, who, who. I tell you the truth. As you take even there is hell. There is beast. 
as you take, you are killing yourself. Tell somebody never ever. I'm preaching it on the camera. Those who want to say that I'm destroying their business, I am saving the children of God. Drink water. Drink something else. But don't drink beer and, all, uh, and those, those things, others. But take something that will give you health. Are we together? So that's the time I realized. Men do not pray for their pastor. I was all alone for some months. Tell your neighbor, pray for your pastor. Like in this church, if, if I'm not strong, you see, there's that slogan that they say, if you want to meet, to go to the man of God, you go through mama. <laughs> so, sometimes my phone, it is like an outline. Any problem? This, mom, this has happened. Mom, I am in this situation. Mom, speak a word. And some things I will not tell apostle. I will just deal with them myself. So, when the children of God started to move forward, because they were commissioned, they were released by God, they were commanded by God, it is turned the heart of their enemy. So I want to tell you from today, there will be a reaction to your enemies, but they will not stop you. I said they will not stop you. Balak hired Balaam to come and curse for him, the children of God. So I came to declare, nobody will stand to curse you. <laughs> I said nobody will stand to curse you. <laughs> I say no one will stand to curse you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I came to declare there is no divination against Israel. I say no divination against Israel. The Lord will always commit himself to give you protection, to give you direction when he commissions you to move forward. So the Lord was committed to watch over them. And that is why he warned Balaam. If you read that chapter verse 20, this is what God is saying to him. Quickly take me verse 20. Hey. And God came to Balaam at night. May God visit on Balaam's in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoever is preparing to do you harm. Whoever is preparing to take you backward. Whoever has been elevated and anointed from hell to interfere with the program of God over your life. I declare, may God of Israel, may God of Israel, may God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God do appear to Abimelech when he took Sarah and he told them, Behold, you are a dead man because this woman is the wife of my prophet. So may the same God who told Laban when he wanted to pursue Jacob, he told them, Don't do anything wrong on good or bad to Jacob. Hey! When, when Balaam wanted to go and do the mission, the assignment of the devil, verse 20, God appeared to him at night. And I came to tell you, in the name of Jesus, God is about to appear to some people on your behalf. I said God is about to appear to some people on your behalf. I was being told by my husband, a testimony of a man of God they were ministering with in the same conference. This man of God, he just relocated from where he, he, was, he, was, he was having a church. God just directed him 
to another place. And uh, he was just trusting God for a land. A land to build an altar from God. And this man of God was giving a testimony. I don't know whether it was Mbakasi or Utawala in Nairobi. He just went to his car. And before he started the journey, he saw an angel standing right in front of the car. And he drove. And he drove. The angel was just walking. The man of God is driving. The angel was just walking. The man of God was driving. The angel went and stood in a plot somewhere. The plot that and all the materials to build. And when the man of God arrived there, he parked. The angel disappeared. <laughs> he heard the Lord telling him, this is the land for my church. He said, I cannot even disturb myself to ask. Because already, the owner has planned all kind of materials to build. So he went to the next plot. And as he was going there, he heard the voice telling him, why are you going to the next plot? Where did the angel stand? So he turned back and he asked some people, who is the owner of this plot? He was told, she is a lady but not born again. She is a weekend woman. So he just said, just give me her number. The man of God was given her number. He called. Hello? She answered. The man of God told her, uh, I am an apostle. He told, me, I do, he told him, I don't like to hear anything concerning pastors. There are people who hate pastors with passion. So, the man of God told her, I just called to inform you that this land belongs to God. And he just cut off. He put off his phone and he left. The Lord appeared to that woman that night. That is the Lord God we want. I said that is the Lord, the Lord God that we want. When God commissions you to move forward, there is no power of darkness. There is no demon. There is nothing, 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 nothing that can tamper with the will of God. So the Lord God appeared to that woman at night. May the Lord appear to whoever is holding that which is yours. I said may the Lord appear to whoever is holding that which is yours. Anybody that is holding your land. Anybody that is holding your money. Anybody that is holding what will make you to improve in your life. Because when you begin to move forward, there must be improvement in your life. I said forwardness brings improvement. Forwardness brings glory. Forwardness brings establishment. Forwardness brings settlement. Forwardness ushers you to favor. So, when God appeared to that woman that night, the woman called the following day in the morning. She, she had to scroll her phone. She scrolled her phone and remembered the time that the man of God called because she had not saved the number. She thought this is the number. She called the man of God. She told the man of God, you said what? The man of God told her, I told you the land that you have planned the material to build belongs to God. She told them, I believe you are a man of God. You and God appeared to me last night. Where are you? The man of God <laughs> told her where he was. The woman told her, I want us to meet. They met. She came carrying all the documents. She transferred the land and the materials. She told her, go and build the church from God. That is how that church is established here in Nairobi. I came to tell you this God is not a joke. Tell your neighbor this God is not a joke. <laughs> tell your neighbor this God is not an history. He is not a history. He does what he says. He does what he has purpose to do. And this is what he has purpose to do. He has purpose. you begin to move forward. 
Because as long as you remain in that level, you are not being glorified. And this kind of forwardness, it is coming at a high speed. I said prepare yourself to move at a high speed. Things that won't take many years to take place, they are just being fixed in months, I send in months. I send in months. I pray God. Let someone under the anointing of my voice. This year. Become his or a here. Of going up in life. In the name of Jesus. God appeared to Balaam. That night. And what did the, the, the wonder of the Lord. Uh, say. Can you take me there kindly. Mm. <laughs> And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Not be silent, I will always worship you as long as I am breathing, I will always worship. Can you lift up your hands a minute and thank God because of the breath that he has given. He is the life. He is the breath that you are breathing. I send you the breath that you are breathing. I send you the breath that you are breathing. Can you lift up your hands uh, even while you are sitting there. Tell him I will not be silent. I will not keep quiet. As long as I am breathing Lord. As long as I am breathing. As long as I am breathing. You are the hair that I breathe Lord. Breathe Breathe again, breathe again, breathe again to this church, breathe again to this man, Father, breathe again to these women, breathe again, Lord, to these young people, breathe again to these teenagers, breathe again to these little ones, breathe again, Lord, breathe, breathe again, breathe again to us, breathe again to us, breathe again to us, Lord. Breathe, O oh Lord, breathe again. Breathe again. Let them be life again. Let them be life again to this destiny, Lord. Let them be life again to this marriage. Let them be life again, Lord. Let them be life again, Jesus. Let them be life again, Jesus. Shalaba kandalaba handalaba. Reka busotaha. And God came to Balaam at night and said, If the men come to call you, rise and go. With him. But only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. The Lord inter interfered with the program of this diviner. And I came to tell you in the name of Jesus, God is interfering. I said God is interfering with the programs of the enemies of your life. God is interfering with the program of witches and wizards in your village. God is interfering with the minds of your bosses. They thought they will suck you, but God will not permit. Nobody will bring you down this season. Amen. Now, when God releases you to your time to move forward, you begin to rise up. I said you begin to rise up. It is the will of God for you to rise or to raise, to go up from one level of glory to another. That is the word. Tell someone that is the word. So when God releases you to your time and season, when the clock of your destiny is set by God, Bible tells me, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. Take us there. Take us there. 
And I pray that somebody will get this. I pray that somebody will take this word. I pray that someone will take this season. To everything, there is a season. Tell somebody to everything, even around your life, there is a season. Hey! Hey! Tell someone to everything, there is a season. <laughs> I came to tell you, even if you are not happy, you have not been enjoying what has been happening in your life, it was a season. I said it was a season to everything. Time of loss is a season. Time of pain is a season. Time of loneliness is a season. Time of stagnation. Time of feeling that you are ashamed. Time of captivity is a season. Time of slavery is a season. And it is God who sets the clocks of destiny. He set the clock of destiny in the life of Abraham and unto his descendant. In Genesis 15, Abraham is having a conversation with God and God is revealing to this man. He is telling him what is a hand of him. He is telling him about his descendant and God and to set a clock of their destiny. He said they won't be in a land where they won't be foreigners. In a land where they don't know even their language. Let me tell you, there is a season that can happen in your life. You don't even understand what is going around. For 400 years, they were set on that clock. And Moses came to interfere with the clock of the destiny. I pray that nobody will arise before time. I pray may your life be programmed to the set time of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Moses arose when 10 years were remaining. It cost 10 them 30 more years. But when the time came, as the Lord had said that they will not come out empty handed. So during your time to move forward, you don't go empty handed. I came to tell you, you are not going forward empty handed. I said you are not going, uh, you are not going empty handed. There are some blessings. There are some helpers. There are some opportunities. There are some chances that the Lord is releasing onto your life. And mark my words, read my lips. I want to tell you, the Lord is about to give you a sign. I I said the Lord is about to give you a sign. I said the Lord is about to do something. I love this God. I love you, Lord. I adore you, Lord. I live my life before your throne. I love you, Lord. I adore you, Lord. I live, I live my life before you. And I'm beside you. And beside you, Lord. No other, no other God but you. I live my life. I live my life before you. To everything. There is a season. I send to everything there is a season. There is a season to be born. There is a season to die. There is a season to build. There is a season to destroy. There is a season to plant. Now, take me, take me, take me as one. I'm not done with it. To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. So I want to, and I want to bring to our attention that your life is now officially being ushered into the program of God. Last week, but one, by the grace of God, I was dealing with evil programs. I was dealing with evil programs. The Lord had commanded me to bless his people, which I did here. And the devil can do nothing about it. And I declare you are blessed. 
It doesn't matter your origin. It doesn't matter who brought you forth in this world. I want to declare the signature of the blessing of God over your life in Jesus' name. Now, today, I heard them very clearly yesterday night. I was just there. And I was asking the Lord, what about your church tomorrow, Lord? Because I don't plan what to say. I don't plan what to preach. He told me, go tell my church. It is their time to move forward. So, in everything there is a season. In everything there is a season. Tell your neighbor, in everything there is a season. So I want to tell you, even what has been happening in your life, it was a season. It was a season. Some of us have not been in a good season. Most people, especially since Corona knocked the doors of nations, they have not been in a good season. But we as our God, today we can give each other high five and high tens because our God. I was telling people here another day. It's not because of what you've done. It is not because of much that you may think you did. Some of us here, I tell us the truth. Some of us, you contacted COVID, but God in his own way. <laughs> I said God in his own way, he boosted your immunity. So you never knew what is happening. That is the Lord. Wengine hapa wamulipoteza smell. Tukaanza kuwa na mavitu ya eleweki. No guy ne washi ama. Kuna wimbo tukua tunaimbanga kitabu. Ne washi ama. Ne washi ama. Ne washi ama. He ne washi ama. Jeso ne washi ama. I'm... They were starting with bass. That's why I started with bass. Some are wondering, what's wrong with this woman? You are starting. Newa shiama. Newa shiama. Newa shiama. I saw newa shiama. Yes, oh, newa shiama. Newa shiama. Oh, my goodness. I was a solace of that song. And that is where God is taking us. In everything, there is a season. There is a season in crisis in the family. You speak, the husband gets it wrong. And he asks you, woman, you wonder your husband is calling you woman. It is a season. Tell your neighbor it's a season. And he's a born again man speaking in tongues, but you are not reading from the same page. Now you decide to answer him. He tells you, all right, you have lifted yourself. Eh? You purpose to keep quiet the next day. Oh, you have purpose to ignore me. Eh? So what do I do? What do I do? Tell your neighbor it is a season. A season when you try to gather. You work very hard. You go home tired. But when you look at what you have gathered. Very tired. You sleep frustrated. A season where nobody is understanding you. A season even workers themselves. They are not connecting with what you are telling them. A season when your body decides to ache. You rebuke demons and even you call for help and you are prayed for. You go to the hospital. They do all what they can do but the body is aching. Tell your neighbor it's a season. A season where you feel you are lost. Nobody whom you can share with Nobody is understanding you. Nobody is on your side. It's a season of separation because God wants to have time with you. A season when your own people.
disowns you. They can disown you. They can disassociate themselves with you. A season when everybody who comes on your way triggers pain in your life. Becomes a source of pain because it is a program set that this is the test. A season when your life becomes a wrong test. Tell someone a time can be in your life when your life becomes a road test, everybody wants to come and do the testing through your life. If you don't believe, take me to the book of uh, is, uh, Psalm 66. When your life becomes a road test, <laughs> Brundosa, Kibi Kibi, you call them Kibi Kibi. I wonder how you call it. When even Kibi Kibi and Tuk Tuks. And Mikoko tennis and everything comes to do a round test. And God is just watching. Will he with his stand? Will she with his stand? Can you take me to that verse? I want to assure you before God releases you, and some of us here have been tested. <laughs> today, today it is the day of clearance. You have caused men to write over our hands. So men can write over your hand. Men can give you sleepless nights. They call you names. And till sleeping becomes a problem. They brand you. They speak about you. I like somebody rent for us yesterday here. We had a very good time with ladies here. And God bless them mightily. And someone rent for us. In, in, in some, I believe it is 69, we are even saying is, I have even become the song of drunkards. So when drunkards are, are drunk, they say, David, you are useless man. Bure kabisa. So men can write and God can permit them to write on your hand. In other words, you become powerless before men. They, you can't exercise any authority. Nobody takes whatever you are telling them. They write on your hand. They speak. Even those that you used to help. Those that you clothed. Those that you fend. Those that you sacrifice for them. They come and ask you. Stupid woman. You are you are own. You are beloved. They tell you. So, Baba Bure, as on a Turunjanga Nako Kabana Kako, Kwan Yako Kamume Kako, and we are Nakwambia Nimutuen. Ako Kabana Kako, Kwan in Nikamungu, Nako Kabana Kako, and Dikokana Pia Chakula. Utoto mtoto, unanjiringa na, unafikiria tunaenda wapi, jiandae kuzika. Mutu, right. And to keep quiet, you ask in court, what wrong did I do? You have not done any wrong. It is the time of wrong test. You have become a wrong test. The next verse, oh, oh God. And I will not be silent I will always worship you as long as as long as I am breathing I will always worship you we went through the fire and through the water. So that journey, when God allows you to become a round test, a testing material, a testing material, he subject your life, he subject your greatness, he subject your destiny into 
attesting. He subjected the author of salvation, our master, into problems, into troubles. You cannot run away from it. And now when it comes to fire, you don't run away. You don't run. You walk. Tell somebody you walk through the fire. It is not, you are told by a father of faith in this house, it is not a running race. It is a walking race. It is a walking race. You walk through the fire. This is the time you just wake up one morning. You feel you are not all that well. And your conscience tells you, go and see a doctor. When you go, the report that you are given, you are scared. You are working very well. When they do some tests, they tell you, we can see a tumor. And we don't know what it will manifest to be. I don't know whether this is cancer or not. One of us here, she's here. She told me, Mom, speak a word. I've been told my mother, as cancer. I told her, your mother is well. And I declare, as she goes next time, they will give a different report. She came and told me, they have tried to look and see those things that you are attesting that it is cancer. They have confirmed she is well. Nothing but the word of God Nothing but the prayer of faith. And I came to tell you, I don't care the report that you are carrying. I don't care what they have said. I don't care the report of the doctor. I came to tell you, they won't give you another report. I said after this, they will confirm that you are well. Because that body of yours, it is not the body to us diabetes. It is not the body to us cancer. It is not the body to us HIV and AIDS. It is not the body to carry those terminal illnesses. I am declare the blood of Jesus over your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And therefore I declare, may the blood of Jesus flash out. I said may the blood of Jesus flash out every sickness out of your body. Can you lift up your hands and say, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I will not service my body through medication. I came to declare in the name of Jesus, your bills are not for medical bills. From today forward, I came to announce under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, nobody even in your family won't be used to channel your money to sicknesses and diseases. Ah! I declare in the name of Jesus, even your people, your parents, your beloved, I declare healing over them. I send, I speak healing over them. They will not be used by the devil. Same our to where to. Sikian nano lapuan. Am tatumika. Kwanji ambaya. Kusababisha. Pesa zangu. Kuingia. Kwa service ya magonchwa. In the name of Jesus. I declare you are healed, my people. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. Those that we are trying to help. I don't know whether some of us, you can understand this. But let me tell us. You can try to help even your own people. You can go put up a business. Two months, amekula amemaliza. Naza kukuambia tu makitu. We want to declare. They won't be responsible in the name of Jesus. You will be responsible in the name of Jesus. When you become that wrong test material, you carry the burdens, the loans that are too heavy. Hey, you are surrounded by every call from your people. 
That is why I'm billionaire. Amongst poor, he is poor. Say, Lord, lift my people. Lord, bless my people. Bless my people. Bless my relatives. In the name of Jesus, bless the work of their hands. Bless the work of their hands. In the name of Jesus, my people, receive the word of God. Go up. Move forward. I am not moving alone. We are moving together. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, move forward. Even if you move alone, you cannot make a difference. So, the Bible says, he went through fire. Through fire. The fire comes to refine you. The fire comes to deal with your faith. The fire comes to test and to remove all the impurities. You have caused men to rind of our hands. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to reach fulfillment. This is the month of fulfillment. You brought us out. You brought us out. You brought us out to reach fulfillment. To reach fulfillment, I declare in the name of Jesus, you are beginning and journey. Your business is beginning and journey. Your marriage is beginning and journey. Your children are beginning and journey. Your destiny is set on and journey. From now and further, you are coming out. The Lord is bringing you out and He is taking you to the place of fulfillment. From blessed is the Lamb of God. Blessed is the Lamb of God who was slain for us to become rich, for us to receive power, for us to receive riches, to receive wealth, for us to receive strength, for us to receive wisdom, for us to receive honor, glory, and blessing. There is the package that when Jesus was slain, it was a, a compulsory blessing. It was a compulsory package for every child of God. And I came to the clear today. You are coming out. You are coming out of death. You are coming out of shame. You are coming out of slavery. You are coming out of that cave. Hey, I said, Unatoka kwa mapango, kwa mapango, kwa mapango. Malaika lieto kelezi angindioni. Akiwa menjificha, he was a commander. Some of us here, you are not just ordinary people. Some of us here, you are commanders. Some of us here, you are mighty men of valor and mighty women of valor. But some things have subjected you to go into the hiding. The angel, the prophet of God came and told him, hey, you mighty man of valor, arise with that mighty, arise with that strength of yours. I have come to tell you, inuka na izo ngufu, inuka na uweza, inuka na izo ngufu, inuka na uweza, inuka na izo ngufu, inuka na uweza, arise with that mighty of yours, the time to move forward, it is the time to arise. It is the time to arise. It is the time to shine. Bible says arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I came to tell you the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon this ministry. It is the time of lamb to arise. It is the time of this ministry to shine. To shine in this city. To shine in this nation to shine in the nations of the world. It is the time for that business of yours that you have been pampering for years and it has not been going up. It is the time for that business to rise. It is your time to be married. Wendings in this church from this year it will be an honor of the day. Amen. Let me repeat myself. From this year. Diandaini. 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 Diandaini kuzawa watoto wakwe. Amen. 
Tunaigwa viandaini. Tunasia viandaini. Tusimamia maharusi hapa. Viandaini. Viandaini. Nasikia kama nitaunganisha moja. Kabosha la baraba. Hey. If you go to Sharia house. My name is there. I have an official certificate from the government of Kenya to officiate weddings. Na nimesikia harufu. Kama kuna moja aposto hata kuwa around na lazima yunganishwe. As long as I am breathing, I will always wash it. Marusi. Kwa hii kanisa. The sons of Abraham. They are meeting the daughters of Abraham here. And in this altar. I am saying with a lot of confidence. I have a file there in my office. I'm not saying what I'm not been working on. Last year, but one, the Lord told me, call those girls. No, 2019. He told me, call your daughters. First of all, he gave me a direction. I prayed, and I told God, Father, in 2009, 208, 209, you directed me to sow a seed because of my sons and daughters for their establishment, for their settlement. I sowed a seed, but I prayed blindly. I can say it is blindly because it's only a few. I believe we have how many families? I think it is like three families that are constantly, I think two, two are, Two are serious. The other one is somehow shaky. Them that are standing. Those who married them. Others got married. Uh, I have four. Others got married. And they went. Some of them backslidden. Some of them they took the things of God seriously. With, with uh, lightly instead of ser- with a lot of seriousness. And this time round. I prayed and told God, God, they are here. But I pray that you raise a different generation of, of couples in this ministry. Of sons and daughters of Abraham who will stand even after marriage. That they will stand, serve you. Even as you lift them. Even as you give them children. As you give them wealth. That they will serve you with, with their wealth. So I, I trusted God. And I believe the end of 2019, the Lord spoke to me. And he told me to sow a seed because of them. And when I wanted to do that, he told me, call them. And engage them. I called them. Actually, they, they were just given a direction of just sowing only 1,000. Cannot compare 1,000 with a marriage. But I gave them better part of the seed. And I sent that seed. The word was spoken over their lives by my spiritual authority. And I forwarded that message to them. Then, 2020, I was given an idea. I told them to go and prepare their marriage budget. And anyone who brought a shabby and budget that has no faith in it, I was taking him, I was taking them back and prepare a good budget. They prepared those budgets. They're in the file in the office. One of, one of my daughters did a budget in dollars. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And now, I, I mean, the wife, their husbands, for, few, for some months, I was lying when I'm praying inside there, I would lie down on those budgets inside that file. And I cried to the Lord until God gave me a wand. 
and he told me, it is now done. And I told God, give me a sign. And God gave me a sign. A sign whereby this year we are having a wedding in this church. And from there, prepare. And the money for weddings, God will provide. And these families will serve the purpose of God. He is my worship. All of my worship. So God meets Gideon. A man who was carrying the destiny of the nation. You can be a man who is carrying the, the destinies of the family are hanging on you. The destiny of cities are hanging on you. The destiny of nations are hanging on you. And you can be reduced to a man who is begging. You can be reduced to be a man and a woman of cave. You can be running away from people that you should be helping because of shame. Gideon, when the angel appeared to him in the book of Judges chapter number 6, Gideon was asking himself questions. Where are the signs and wonders? Where are the miracles that we were being told about this God by our forefathers? But that did not hinder the will of God. He was told, arise with that might and go and demolish the, the authors of Baal that your father has erected for Baal and raise me an altar there. That is how the nation was brought back to victory. Why? There was a man who was commissioned to move forward. And I can sing Gideon's here. They are rising. I say I can sing Gideon's here. They are rising. I can sing Joshua's in this place. They are rising. I can sing Deborah's. They are going and they are sitting to judge, to judge the people of God. They are sitting in Deborah's tree. Kabo Shatabahanda. Men slept. And the Bible says, and Martha, this mother, this mother, this mother, Deborah, she arose. There are mothers that are rising. There are mothers that God is lifting up. Extraordinary mothers, uh, responsible mothers, uh, blessed and anointed mothers, uh, mothers who speak the voice of God, mothers who speak the voice of God. They will speak the voice of God uh, to their children. Uh, they will speak the voice of God to the cities. Uh, they will speak the voice of God. Uh, I can see Moses says, are rising. I said there are men that are rising. There are men with authority. Ah, I came to declare central the mistake, the error is being corrected. Men are rising again. Men in central, they are going back to their position. I said men in central, they are going back to their position. Men in central, they are going back to their position, to their position. And God is beginning with men from the church. God is blessing you so that you not walk your head down. Ah, bahandala. Gideon was told, go, go. So during the time of moving forward, the wand of God will locate you where you are. And the wand has located you today. I said the wand has located you today. You are coming out of the cave. I said you are coming out of the cave. Some of us, Gideon, Gideon alikuwa anapuriangano mahala pamvinyo. Not in the threshing floor. He was doing that kind of business in a, it is called what? Wine press. Wine press, it is for the olives. And that is why some of us, what you are operating, some businesses that you are doing, some jobs that you are doing, instead of operating from a threshing floor, you are operating from a wine press. When you are supposed to be having companies, but today, by the grace of God, you are beginning your journey to greatness. Amen. 
njui kudhaka njui dhako ndiraria kiwo kya ngai ndiroiga ndiraria kiwo kya ngai ndiraria motorere waku na ndiraria kiwo kya ngai ngai ne wa motorere waku this is the high time you receive the word of god na na shanga kingine nilihubiri kesha na kikui kuki that is a sign you are possessing this land yo ni shara are ha 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 this is the time of god gai ware ame moyo vikereria we igoro roa e ho ka e ra neo do wa de o gai wa kwa na tondo re mo ne ne nani gyo re mo i gwa da do ga to ti i came to tell you your time of captivity has expired your time to be mocked by babylonian on the river banks of babylonian that time is up they came and mocked them they came and told them sing to us one of your songs of zion but they said we cannot sing the song of the lord in a foreign land ah if you never compromise before you attend this service you are not compromising if you never died before you attend this service i came to tell you, you shall live all your days you shall fulfill all your days if your marriage never divorced if you never separated before you came to this service if they never sacked you before you came to this service i came to declare they are late they are too late they are too late to sack you they are too late to mock you they are too late to despise you they are too late to bring you down because it is a time of the lord in your life you are in the lord's time it is the time to move forward they say and we cannot sing in psalm 137 we cannot sing we cannot sing the song the songs of zion makasu katara hata he shala barabo katara bahanda jesus 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 how shall we sing the song the lone song in a foreign land i came to tell you you not bow to the events auta wa inamia auta wa inamia na sema auta wa inamia you are carrying a big god to bow before the events now continue continue if i forget you Jerusalem if i forget you father if i forget you jesus if i forget your promises let my right hand forget its scales this is how serious they were in captivity but they refused to compromise daniel shandrak meshak abed nego they refused to compromise not happened next i told you everything as as god has season Ah if I do not remember you let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not exalt Jerusalem and bath my chief joy that is why when they targeted Daniel they wanted to interfere with this worship the lord just gave them time 120 governors they went to their parliament wakapitisha sheria vile tumeona katika serikali ile ambayo iko ikipitisha sheria hata za mbimbi yake akasema nobody can stop but god this is the land of god kenya belongs to god kenya belongs to god so daniel they refused 
they refused. And when time came, God signaled Daniel. Daniel, as he was going through this cross, he met the prophecy of Jeremiah. And the prophecy was declaring, was stating that the time of captivity of the children of Israel would last for 70 years. Daniel set his heart to pray so that the people of God will be released and move forward. That is where the journey started. And I came to tell you, as Daniel, your journey has started. Your time of captivity has expired. Your time of losses, your time of joblessness, your time of deaths and struggles and pains and shame and despise and rejection and depression and distress and humiliation. I came to announce under the unction of the Holy Spirit that time is over. In Psalm 126, because they were not supposed to remain in caves, they were not supposed to remain in slavery. They were not supposed to continue to be harassed in the prison, to be harassed uh, as slaves. In Psalm 126, beginning from verse 1, and this is what is about to happen in the life of someone in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when the Lord brought back <laughs> tell, tell your friend I am I am I am I am I am going back the Lord the Lord is bringing back to my life the Lord is bringing me back to my victory the Lord is bringing me back to the place of establishment the Lord is bringing me back to the place of blessing the Lord when the Lord brought captivity back when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion we were like those you dream. I want to tell you, this is what God is about to do. You are about to look. Uko karibu kuangalia maisha yako na uanze kunjishangaa mwenyewe. Wengine hawashikanishi lakini naomba Bwana akasaidie mtu. Uko karibu kuangalia pesa zile ambazo zilikuwa mbali na wewe. Transactions zile utaanza kufanya za millions. Unashindwa ni mimi uyu. Wengine. <laughs> Apostle was giving me a testimony of where he is. Today they are having a celebration. Because the parents of the pastor who has hosted him. They celebrate their birthday the same day. Are we together? A couple. Eight and 70 years. Sarah and Abraham. You see, they end a difference of 10. So the wife is 70 and very young. The man is 80. So the son has just decided to surprise the parents through a surprise birthday today in the church. So, mze alikuwa naambia eta apostle, imagine ni miaka yote. Mimi nimekuwa nime, nime nimeajiriwa na serikali, nilikuwa anga na pesa, niko na watoto ambao wako na pesa, lakini hata nikikuja kwao, hakuna yule hameoi fikiria, mpande ndege. Lakini, nasie tunikuwa pe, na kosa pesa, sijawi mimi mwenyewe kunjifikiria kupanda ndege. Lakini, the, the old man is building a store building. Home. So time yako ikifika, you are just switched on. You don't struggle to do things. You, I say you don't struggle to do things. You don't struggle to flow. So nataka kukuambia after this, kuna mambo ya taanza kutendeka utakani kama unaota. Utakani kama unaota. Utashanga. Utashanga. Nikuwa napeana testimony siku ingine. Ujua ni vile wengine muna kujanga kunipea testimony ya msimamangi church kusema. Wamunene akopale. Simama wamunene. That woman. 
and we appreciate her. As we speak today, she is a landlady. She is a landlady. Something that I, she was telling me last year when you are going to minister for your, your, your church, I, I, I went there to launch the women conference. Morning glory during COVID, by the grace of God, I speak life over them. Now many people are loaded. Many destinies are loaded. So that day, the Holy Spirit just led me. Akaniambia, niambia mtu, auliza mungu. Jambo lili anataka, ukiuliza kuja kwa madhabau. Then, we will, I won't be confirming, we won't be angering. She told me, she, she told God, I don't want just to go there. Just put a word in my mouth. She asked God two things. Establishment and what? And restoration. She told me exactly when you came, laid your hands on me. You said, God, I agree with her. Let her be restored. Let her be established. From there, she received a call. Somebody told her, I have some money that I see. Can you develop your land where you are? That's how she built houses. Right now, she's a landlady. And the devil can do nothing about it. Amen. And you are going to develop the, 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 the other plot. Receive that in grace. Simple but loaded. I tell you the truth. Wakaro, prepare yourself. Kiandae. Your promotion is coming. Pale unafanya kazi, utakuwa unafunguliwa. Si makaratasi, linema, watakuwa unafungua mlango. Madam, madam. Today you are owning a position of ambos in that place. Your promotion is coming. See, Masomo, uh uh. Jerry, God is interested with you. God is interested with you. God is interested with your destiny. We present him well. Do you hear me? Present. Are you in the CU? In your college? Huh? We present God. God will take you to places. You. God will take you to places. You. And you are carrying the destinies of many people. And from today, your life has just started to move forward. So make sure you stay it right. As long as I am breathing. Mina anasema sige umalize. Ndiyo karibu kumaliza wacha nifanya hile ambayo nafanya hapa. Mavo. Melvin. Can you stand up? The grace of God. Just be on your feet. The grace of God is resting upon your life. And God is coming to release new strength from within you. And you will begin to walk with an anointing. An anointing. A prophetic anointing. You. Prophetic anointing. You will begin to speak things and they will become. Because you are not ordinary. And that is why the devil is very mad to crush your destiny. And I declare he has no power over your life. He has no authority over your life. You are a vessel of God. Mark my words. Hear this. God has chosen you to make you a wealthy person when you are young. And it will be for the purpose of the kingdom. You carry the mantle of wealth. Can you come here? Makota Sokaha. Come here. 
you carry the mantle of wealth and God will release passion and laugh and cry for the kingdom. Lift up your hands. God is dealing with every pain in your heart. Do you hear me? Pain. And within three days, there will be a great relief from inside of you. The mission of the devil against your life has backfired. The devil wanted to take away your life. But you will not die. You will not die now. You will live to declare the promises of God. The devil wanted to use you to commit suicide. But the Lord preserved you. Preserved you. You will begin to release divine ideas. You will begin to invent things. And you will prosper when you are young. God will surround you. You will not be corrupted. All what you are channeled to you you will build the kingdom of God. What he has put in you, you will build an altar from God. You will build a sanctuary from God. You, you, I don't know when, but during that time, you just stand and build a temple from God. Father, I thank you because of this vessel. I thank you because of the intestine of your mouth. I set you now to move forward. You will never know backwardness. Devil will not tamper with this destiny that you carry. You are God's choice. You are God's voice. You are God's agenda in this generation. I declare surrounding. I declare a covering. I declare protection. Holy Spirit of God, come upon him from today. Receive that increase. Receive that anointing. In Jesus' name. I like it. I like it. When God sets your life to move forward, Bible tells me in the book of First Samuel, I believe it's chapter 16, and Samuel went, and Samuel went, and he anointed David. Let me confirm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you put it? Can you put that? <laughs> Please, very quickly. Samuel went with the horn of oil. So some people here today, La Pocatasata, by the grace of God, the oil of God. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. There are some people that God is distinguishing you in the midst of your brothers. Biological brothers and spiritual brothers. The Lord is releasing an anointing upon your life. Because the ones that I'm speaking, I'm speaking on behalf of God. And these ones are invoking the anointing of God over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells me, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him. In the, please, don't ever forget to remind your son about this word of today. Write it somewhere. Go print it. Put it in his room. Remind him constantly. Because when God set you apart to build an altar for him, it is not a joke. Constantly call that young man. You as a father, be laying your hands on him. Speak once of blessing and always remind him you are set to build an altar for God until it comes to pass. Please nurture that word. Nurture that word. 
Now, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So the spirit of God that is coming upon this church, that is, that is coming upon men today, that is coming upon women here today, that is coming upon our children today, he will not cease. He will not cease to flow in our lives. So the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. But David remained the anointed of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is how he was set by God to destroy, to kill lions, to kill bears, to kill those animals that invented the flock of his father. And the set time, that which was the determining day, the Lord sent him through his father. He went to the battlefield and that is how he was able to bring down the giant who was challenging hey, the people of God. I declare you from today, you are a giant killer. I said I declare you a giant killer. I declare from today, you are a giant killer. Go and destroy those giants. Go and... Hey, shakaria bahanda. Lepa kazokataya. He anointed him in the midst of his brothers who are despising him, who could not eat in the same table with him, that God who is the lifter of our hands, he told Joshua Joshua, tell the children of Israel to consecrate themselves, for the third day I am visiting them and I will lift you before the eyes of the children of Israel. There are people from today, as you come out of this service, you will be lifted before their very eyes. You will be blessed before their very eyes. You will be glorified before their very eyes. Oh Lord. How have they increased who hate me? But thou, God, you are my shield and you are the lifter of my head. So I came to tell you, God is about to set you into a spin that nobody will stop you. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you, and I, and I will not be silent, oh, I will always worship you. So, time of moving forward brings you to an end of wilderness. So, I came to declare your days of manna are coming to an end and you are stepping into the days of harvest. Amen. I said the days of limitation. Manna, they would not keep it. They weren't just using it. Some of us, you have been living that kind of life, head and mouth, but that one is coming to an end. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The time of forwardness brings you out of fire. Brings you out of prison. No prison can, 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 can keep you for long. It brings you out of slavery. And this season when it comes into your life, it collines. It makes you to collide with your greatness. Am I talking to us? The season of moving forward set you into a collation, you collide with your greatness. Bible records the book of Genesis, chapter number 26, beginning from verse. Beginning from verse. Kabadali. Kabadali, kabadali. Naomba muskie. Tunaeleana. I'm combining, um, I, 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 am com I, I have been compelled to combine the prophetic service and the transformation service. Kwa hivyo, sina wakati mwingine wakutabiri, na tabiri sasa hivi. Kwa hivyo, chukua iki sasa. Are we together? Can you take me to the book of Genesis 26, beginning from verse 12?
Yes, my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship. Then Isaac sowed. Let me tell us when God gives you a season of moving forward, it may appear as if it is a bad season. It was during the time of famine when God appeared to Isaac. Isaac wanted to go down to Egypt. He thought that is where his life will be safe. But I thank God we intervened. I wish Almelech, the husband of Naom, would hear God. He would not go to Moab. I wish Angel is secure. Villa is secure. Angel and Moab. And manage Kuingisha Mukewake to a permanent life of a widow. Ten years down the line, two sons married the enemies of God. They also lost their husbands. And there, there were three widows. But Isaac hand, God appeared to him and he told him, my son, my servant, Isaac, do not go down to Egypt. Tell your neighbor, even if challenge comes, I have the stamina to stand. Hallelujah. To stand, to stand, to stand, to stand. Isaac was told, stay. Ka katika ile inchi nitakuonyesha, alikuwa nafikiria labda atambiwa enda pale, enda kule, enda kule. Mungu akamuambia in the same chapter verse to stay in this land. And now, verse 12, the Lord told him to dwell, to dwell, to dwell. Hallelujah. Dwelling is not like passing through a place to dwell. Now, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year. I feel that confirmation in my spirit. And the Lord is confirming this because there is a word when I've been praying for the conference. The Lord told me, I'll use few individuals. They don't have money, but I'll give them money for the conference. And the Lord told me, he will set them. Thank God for this scripture that has come. He will set them to the life of supernatural. So, I, I feel that confirmation in my heart that this year, those you will believe God for a sin to sow to the daughters of destiny. Within this year, they are going to harvest hundred folds. Sinjacha, kupeana testimony. The one of us in this house because it is amazing. Ambaye stima zilipotea huku last year. Na mungu wakamuambia, nataka uninulia madhabao kwenu nyumbani. Wakauliza mungu ntainua aje, na sina aje. Mungu wakamuambia, umeona vile stima zinasumbua nyumba yangu. Ibaanda, kuna kuwa na usumbufu. Nataka ununue generator. Akaandiangalia, akaangalia account, akaangalia maisha yake, akaambia mungu ata unaona sima. Mungu akamuambia, enda utafute. Alikuwa ananiambia, lienda, aka apply loan ya 350,000. Generator, likuwe natoka 550. Niliununua pesa ngapi? 450. So, the amount ambayo ilikuwa inapeanwa kwa soko ilikuwa 550. But God helped us. We landed in a good hands. Ikawa akwamba generator inauzo 450. So, 
alikuwa anapiga simu naomba muniombe nataka na Mungu ameniweka hii mzigo na loan ya ipiti nawekewa vikwazo i have some sms in my phone i would just declare mean god pave our way so some other two they chipped in with 50-50 generator was bought huyu mmoja wetu aliniambia nimeshangazwa na Mungu nikamuuliza na nini akaniambia nilikuwa nalipwa mshahara wa 20000 lakini saa hizi sijui kumetendeka namna gani i cannot explain i am earning 450000 every month that salary was tied to the obedience of buying a generator which akwa na pesa but alipi mungu and as we speak alimalizana na loan am i talking to us tu tuko pamoja so bible records isaac sold a seed ambia mwenzako ni wenye imani upanda mbegu wakati wa kiangazi hata saa hizi wale 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 farmers wanamwaga mbegu kwa shamba ni wale wenye imani wale hawana imani wanangojea mvua sasa wataamka na mbegu zao wakati mvua imenyesha wiki mbili wiki tatu vitu zao watu zimemea wanapalilia ndio hao wanakimbia kupanda wakikimbia kupanda wanakuta sasa wakati hao wengine ma, vitu vyao vimekuwa stable na vinaweza stahimili njua mvua inakatika hawa wanavuna hawa wavuni kuna wakati si wa kungojea manyunyu ili upande Unapanda kwa imani. Mbia mwenzako season zingine si za kungojea manyunyu. Unafuata neno. So, the one says what? Take me. Niko karibu niko na dakika kama Nasikia hata nitakombea watu hapa. Nasikia roho wa kutabiri amejaja. Huyo upako huko. Na kuna watu ambao wanapelekwa maala kwa jina la Yesu. The good thing is that I'm a prophet by call. So the your name I say. Kadiro gara mtu mmoja wa Mungu akaniambia woman of God, my problem all my years. Na amekuwa kwa unduma more than 40 years. The biggest and greatest problem that I have it is to hear God. Kaniambia I don't wanna ubiri Mungu anafanyanga mambo makubwa lakini kumusikia kabla nimsikie inakuanga na shinda kubwa sana kamwambia yeye nashukuru Mungu na nini kusikia Mungu hakuna kila mtu ako na kikwazo yake alikuwa nilianza kumwambia mambo vile Mungu kaniambia kuko namna hiyo maisha yangu iko namna hiyo kuko namna hiyo hata hiyo nilikuwa nafikiria kufanya kaniambia shinda yangu kwa maisha yangu yote ya huduma ni kusikia Mungu kabla aliambie kakitu God you in the environment where God speaks. Hiyo mtu ni mtu ya Mungu na ako na washirika lakini alikuwa ananiambia kabla. Now. Then Isaac sold in that land the land of the enemy. There are places that you are going to take. Not because your enemies are willing because God has commanded them not to do any harm into your life. And he reaped in the same year hundred fold of the Lord for the Lord hundred fold and the Lord blessed him. So I want to tell you <laughs> without any contradiction some people sitting here under the sound of my voice this year 2022 you shall reap and the lord is going to bless you this year you shall you shall carry notable miracles notable blessings notable things to the glory of the name of god and i pray that you not miss na kuombea ya kwamba you you not miss mogambi come here and destroy the spirit of destruction i scatter it i 
called your wife. When was that day? Thursday. I called her in my office. And I gave her some divine warnings. And I told her, arise. For I am seeing things that are destructive that will bring a lot of pain in your life. I prayed for her. I thank God I, she came and I prayed for her. Friday, was it? I called her Thursday. Saturday. Saturday morning. A husband comes here in church, prays, and decides to wash, to clean washrooms. I thank God for his humility. He is the first man that I saw here cleaning this church. Him. After morning glory, I took a mob, and now she, now she, now she. Usiache hiyo kazi. Mesikia? Tumeleana? Hata kama ni portion moja. Just inaosha room moja inaenda. That is where your greatness is. So he went just to clean men's washroom. Only to hear a sound. A stuk tuk. And I don't know whether it's a drunken man or who just came and knocked it down. I thank God he was not in. Arise. Do you hear? Arise. And to you, by the grace of God, and the anointing of God upon my life, nothing will destroy you. Nothing will kill you. Nothing will destroy anything that is yours in Jesus' name. And the spirit to inject your fortune, I arrest it. I arrest it. Nothing will ever inject your fortune. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. And all what is yours, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. You fortune are injectors. I destroy you. And I surround Mugambi with the precious blood of Jesus. As you go up, continue in humility. Serve God. I declare protection over you over your family, over your children, over your wife, over your properties, in Jesus' name. We're trying to track, even now we were doing it with my, with my son in our house to, yesterday. We were trying to, trying to track over my, through my phone, we would try to check, but because it was dark, it was 5.55, it was dark, you cannot tell the number plate of that car. You let dust, you let book a pallet, Yo vumbi awezi sema yo gari ni nani. Lakini tunatangazia mwenye aligonga na akatoroka. Mkono wabwana umfuate katika china la esu. And I had clear spend to the insurance to do what is necessary so that you continue with your work in Jesus' name. So this year, it will be the year of sowing and harvesting. Sowing and harvesting. Sowing and harvesting. The next verse, what happened? I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Please, my camera people, I mean media. The man began to prosper. So when God set you to a foreign moon, prosperity is no longer an issue. <laughs> prosperity is no longer a problem. Those who have been struggling to prosper, you will prosper with his. I send you prosper with his. This ministry is prospering with his. We are taking territories and lands with his. Oh, maintain the scripture. And continued prospering <laughs> until he became very prosperous. Pros one line mentioning prosperity three times, it was a dangerous prosperity. It was a contagious prosperity. Amen. And I declare that prosperity is knocking at you. Amen. There are people, there are people who get mad when they hear a preacher preaching or mentioning prosperity. The kingdom of God is a prospering kingdom. And if you are in the kingdom, you must prosper. I said, if you are in the kingdom of God, you must prosper. 
So the Bible records, the man began, and I declare from today, you are beginning and journey of prospering in the name of Jesus Christ. And what happened? He continued, I declare, as you begin, you will not stop. You build one, one apartment, you continue and build two. You build and you build and you build. You buy one land and you continue buying lands. You begin one company and you continue with many and several companies. So he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Until the king himself, until the Philistines themselves, they came and told him, go away from us. Notable prosperity. And I want to declare, where God is taking some of us here, it is your wealth that will be introducing you. You don't know when I'm saying it is your world that will be introducing you right now. If you if you see any car, if you go and see any billboard written Magunas, that is the wealth that is introducing the man. If you go today, even to a, a town, you meet with a billboard Magunas supermarket. Your wealth becomes a, a, a becomes a billboard. May the Lord brand your life. I said, may the Lord brand your life. May the Lord brand your life. That company, that it will spread like bushfire. Kabo Shatalaba. If God releases an idea, don't pocket it. I said, don't put it in the drawers. Hey, begin to work on it. Nasema, Mungu akileta India anza kuifanyia kazi maana huu ni wakati wa matendo nasema ni wakati wa matendo ya Mungu So the man became very prosperous and what happened the next verse hmm. hey. We are standing here only because you made the way you made a way for he had possessions of flocks, possessions of ants pos <laughs> and a great number of servants so the Philistines envied him let me tell you if you have not reached to a level where men are envying you you are not living your life your life is marked by the doing of God where what you control makes men to envy you. The Philistines started to envy him. Now, the next verse, I want to drive something. I want to drive something. Now the Philistines and stopped up all the wells which his father's servant had dug the days of Abraham his father and they had filled them up. They had filled them with earth. What happened? He started kuchimbua kimoja kwa kimoja. Kwa hivyo, when God set you on a forward moon, restoration is a must. I said restoration is a must. Recovering is a must. And I want to declare, even what your forefathers lost in the hands of your enemies, by the grace of God, you shall recover all. I said you shall recover all. I said you shall recover all. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I officially announce the time of restoration. The time of restoration. God is about to give you an ability, the grace of recovering, the grace of being settled. God is giving you a space. God is giving you a room. You are about to come out of congestion of life. Amen. Tell your neighbor you will breathe again. Now, what does it mean? It means when God sets you to such a season, the doors of losses are shut. And doors of losses are shut. I want to declare no more losses in your life. I said no more losses in your life. 
and God, he assures people his presence. So he told Isaac, and my presence will be with you. Can you take me to verse 24? Verse 24, the same verse. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am, the, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I'll bless you and multiply you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So God always remembers his covenant. That is how you are set into a time of fruitfulness, into a time of, of multiplication. Then something else that really happens is that God gives you a resting place. A resting place. When he sets you into a forward move, if he sets you to go forward, he gives you a resting place. Numbers 10, 33 to 36. He gives you a resting place and he scatters your enemies. Please, I'm almost there. Don't get mad with me. Sita kuwa na ibanda ingine. Are we together? The Bible says, so then departed from the mountain of the Lord on a journey of three days. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them for three days journey to search out for a resting place for them. So God committed himself. God committed himself. And I want to tell you, you are a mob. <laughs> You are moving ark of the Lord. I said you are moving ark of the Lord. The presence of God will go before you. And the Lord is about to give you a place to land. Some people you will land and you will get a resting place in business. You will land and get a resting place in marriage. You will land and you will get a resting place to own your own things in Jesus name. Your children are about to rest. To, 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 to come into a place where you will be looking unto them and you tell the Lord thank you. The next verse. We are starting here only because you made a way. You made a way. And the cloud of the Lord was above them by day. When they went out from the camp. So I declare. May the presence of God become notable in your life. Amen. May the glory of the Lord sit over your family. Over that business. Over your own destiny. That whoever will meet with you will not struggle to sing God. The cloud of the Lord was above them by day. When they went out from the camp. And what happened? The next verse. So it was when the hack set out that Moses said, Rise up, Lord. Rise up, Lord. Rise up, Lord. And let your enemies be scattered. And let those you hate you flee from before you. And I stand here in the office of our priest. And I declare, rise up, O oh Lord. Let your enemies scatter. Let the enemies of these, your children, scatter. Let the enemies of their families scatter. Let the enemies of this ministry scatter. Rise up, O oh Lord. Let the enemies, let the enemies of your church scatter. Moses would stand and say, rise up, O oh Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and I declare this morning, rise up, O oh Lord, let the enemies of the destiny of Kenya scatter, let the enemies of these young men and women scatter, let the enemies of these families scatter, let the enemies of you, O oh God, scatter, and let those who hate you flee before you. And what happened? The last verse, and when it rested, when the heart rested, he said, return, O Lord, to the, thou, to the many thousands of Israel. Return, O God. Return, O Lord. I came to tell you, you are about to see the returning of God. Hey! You are about to see the return of the Lord. The return of the Lord cannot be compared by the return of a politician. We have seen politicians coming to our home 
they call they call it home. Come together, or home what? Home coming. And we can see their procession. We can see many people going to Ahura Stadium because of those people. But when the Lord returns, when the Lord returns, there is deliverance. When the Lord returns, there is victory. When the Lord returns, the people rejoice. When the Lord returns, those who are in bondage, those who could not move, those you are injected. Hey, Let me tell you, something is about to happen. Some people that have been despising you, they are about to book an appointment, not for you to go and meet them, for them to come and see you. Amen. As simple as you may be before them, what God is about to do. Hello. Hello, thank you so much for answering my call. Where, where? They're about to tell you. Aki, thank you for answering my call. I'm, I'm very much humbled. When can I see you, please? That is our God. I like people who keep prophecies. I like those who calls and tells me, you, you remember you said this? I do not even remember. But they hold on to that word. And some of us here, those who are not jokers, they will quote this service. Amen. Why? Some of you, as simple as you may appear, you are going to own lands. <laughs> Let me tell you. The Lord gave me this promise and he has amenjirundia maratatu that he has given us Muranga. He has given us the, 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 the mighty men of Muranga. He has given us the city. He has given us the land. So prepare to own lands. Prepare to build houses. Prepare to take territories. Can you stand up? Na eshima ni wewe mwenye nguvu na uweza ni wewe 2 Kings 20 verse 10 and 11 Ni wewe wa kuabudiwa ni wewe ni wewe 2 Kings It is an easy thing. Can you, can you just take me up a little bit? This is the time the prophet Isaiah was sent. Alitumwa kambiwa and ambia ezekaya. Aweke nyumba yake sawa because he's going to die. But the king, he never argued. He never complained. The Bible says he turned the wall. And he called upon the Lord. He cried to the Lord. Akalilia bani. And he reminded God what he has been doing. So the Lord heard. Mungu akasikia na akambia Isaiah arudi. Na ambia Ezekia ya kwamba amemuongezea amemuongezea miaka 15. Hallelujah. The time of moving forward is not the time of death. Some have not just had. I say the time of moving forward it is not the time of death. 
It is not the time of burial. So we refuse death. Yes. I said we reject in death. Yes. We will not die, but we shall live yes. to proclaim the praises of the Lord yes. in the land of the living. For the Lord has delivered our souls from death, our eyes from tears, our feet from falling, and we shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. So we are not dying. We shall fulfill our days. Yes. Say, I will not die. I will fulfill my days. I will not bury my beloved. They will fulfill their days. In Jesus' name. So the prophet was told, go and tell Ezekiah, I have earned 15 years to him. And this will be a sign. So God will give some of us some signs here. Mungu anaenda kuwapatia ishara. Naomba kila moja akaya kiuwa ndani ya roho. Ipeleke pale. Sitoi cha kipindi. Let me use this. Thy be a prophet of God. I sent if I be the prophet of God. Then this word will not fall on the ground. I send this word will not fall on the ground. I want that scripture and you shall know it is not a man who spoke. It is the Lord who spoke in a man. And Ezekiah sent to Isaiah. And he said, now, where are we? We are up or down? Up? Take me up. Quickly, please. Finish. Then Isaiah said, this is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. How many of us have heard the Lord speak today? I want to tell you, the Lord will give you a sign of what he has spoken. I said he will give you a sign. So to some of us, there will be a flow that you have never experienced before. To some of us, the presence of God will begin to sit in your life heavily. Even when you are walking, utaanza kusikia uwepo wa Bwana unakukalia. Ukianza kusense huo uwepo, tell him, Father, speak. Your servant is listening. And the Lord will begin to unveil some things. To some of us, please note it. These, are, these will be some signs. To some of us, there shall be the opening of doors. Milango itaanza kufunguka. Kwa njia isio ya kawaida. Opportunities. Biashara wengine zitaanza kuflow. There shall be unity in families. Unity. Unity in families. Some of us, God will give you a sign. You will visit that doctor and he will give you a positive report. Don't be a sign. Some of us, your performance will just change. Some of us, the glory of the Lord will just sit upon you. Babati watanza kukuliza, inini unapaka sikuizi, ninaona umefunikwa na utukufu. It will be a sign. To some of us, there will be an urge, an urge to seek in God, an urge to pray, an urge to fast. An urge to search in the scriptures and to begin to understand the word of God like never before. To some of us, there will be promotions. To some of us, the Lord will lay a burden, a burden in the things of the kingdom. And when that burden comes in, Doors will begin to open. 
I'm speaking the various signs that will begin to take place. Others, you will begin to see visions clearly. Others, the voice of God will be very clear. The way Bible says, I believe it is in the book of, I think Psalm either 8, 32 or 32 verse 8. I'll teach you and I'll direct you on the way that you're supposed to go. So the voice of God will be very clear, very clear, very clear. Others, the sign that God will give unto you, the struggle, yes, thank you, that 8 verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. So many of us will not miss the way this year. You're not doing business in error. You're not engaged in partnership in error. You're not engaged in relationship in error. God will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And you will guide you with his eye. Trevor, come here. I'm seeing the wisdom of God. Wisdom. Wisdom. Divine wisdom. Please, I beg you, don't follow the route of other teenagers. God wants to release the wisdom. The wisdom. Now, <laughs> if, if, if you have time, go and read Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. And just go Ecclesiastes, you see the wisdom that Solomon was putting down. You begin to walk. And wisdom, it is one of the spirit of God himself. Wisdom. God will make you wise. You begin to handle things with a lot of wisdom. Other shule, you not be colliding with teachers. You follow this one. You will begin to give counsel to others. Wisdom. So, please, I beg you, before the presence of God and before the presence of these people, be very cautious. And every time, tell God to release your wisdom. The Bible says, those who lack wisdom, let them ask. So, it is appointed to each one of us to ask wisdom for God gives wisdom without measure. And that is what God is about to load you with. Do you get that? Father, Clear from today. Let the spirit of wisdom sit upon this young boy. Yes. 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 I release an anointing. An anointing. God instruct this young man. Instruct him. Guide him, Lord. Guide him that you will be a testimony in this generation. In Jesus' name. Another sign, there will be the renewing of the strength. Your, the strength of some people will be renewed. What you got discouraged and you could not do. Some of us, some visions that you buried, God will begin to revive them again. And you receive the strength to move forward. Another sign. God will begin to give some of us divine connections. Divine connections. <laughs> some of us, you interact with the people that you would not imagine in life. They will begin to just make a call and they will summon you. That is how your life will change permanently. Jesus. Take me to, to that verse, my son. In the book of where we were, Kings. I'm winding up. But this is the portion that I'm winding up with. Then he says, this is the sign to you from the Lord. How many of us have had those different signs? May the Lord follow. May the Lord follow. May the Lord give you a sign in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. That the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the shadow Go forward 10 degrees or go backward 10 degrees. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shall the shadow move 
10 degrees forward or 10 degrees backward, then this was the reversal of the nature. And as the car, car said, it is an easy thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. No, but let the shadow go backward 10 degrees. Praise the Lord. And what happened? So Isaiah the prophet cried out to the Lord and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down on the sundial of airs. So there was a reversal. Hallelujah. In the prayer that we are going to pray right now, God will confirm something to you before you come out of this place. Unafanya mambo ambayo mwanadamu hawezi kufanya. Kindly as sound trumpeters lead us through that song. I want you to go before the Lord. If you can kneel down, you kneel down. If you can lie flat, if you can sit in any dimension, I want, I want the Lord to confirm and to follow this word that I will not remain in this level that I am, my family, my worship life, my relationship with God, that I will not be in this level again. Nataka tu ende mbele za bwana ambia bwana akutane na wewe and as we pray together before the Lord the Lord will do something the Lord will do something the Lord will do something in your life 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 the Lord will do something in the life Oh, shara barabuzaya, continue worshiping the Lord. Kazo kandere barabazota, shara bakata rabuzata, mare kato zota, rala bakata zata.
Tukasimama Naweza ukasimama Listen to me Zao Trumpeters The Lord is about To change Your lives permanently As simple As you may look Before people God is making you complicated You are going to own properties. 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 God is going to give you, just be faithful. He's going to give you life. One of these fine days, because we are expanding, speed land rapidly, we are setting purely a parking for your cars. Zion Trumpeters parking. Because God is going to bless you. Speedily. It is not about what you earn. It is not about your salary. It is about the grace that is sitting over this altar. Something that is called straining and struggling, you, you, you will never encounter it. You will flow with ease. But I pray as God performs this word, don't forsake him. Don't leave God. Don't leave God. Peterson, come here. Continue praying. Continue praying. Mama Elisha, just come. God is giving you a home. A good home. And do not struggle to build. Do not struggle to build. Lift up your hands. And prepare. Your second born. Because this is the period to bring your second born. So don't walk with the mentality of men. There's time for God to bring it to bring forth children. There's time for men to prepare for your second born. Father, I declare the grace. Let him move forward. Go and build. Go and build. Go and build. Go and build. The grace now to receive your second. 
is being released to you. In Jesus' name. You are moving forward. Spin you. Spin you. You serve him. Because this is your separation from service is holding many things. The Lord is telling me even your child for purpose. Indeed, you set your heart when to serve the Lord. That child will be released. Don't you want to stay your life or to serve God? Yes. You will begin it. You go back to Asher quickly. Lift up your hands. I commission her to go back to service. Receive grace to serve and even to. Conceive that child in the name of Jesus. That child is a child of destiny, a child of service. We are praying. Continue praying. Esther. You are like Esther. I don't know you. The Lord is saying, you are like Esther. You are carrying the destinies of many people. And royalty is in you. Don't despise yourself. Don't despise yourself. You carry royalty. From today, the favor of God. The favor of God will position you into a royal place. Take grace. Take that anointing. Esther, go to your place. Go to your position. Go to the place of influence. Take that grace. Favor, Lord. I invoke the favor. The favor. The favor, the favor. Take it. Take it. Take it. <laughs> Take it. Take it. Sharabahanda. Millicent, come. Online church, God bless you. From the king's house. He's saying, God bless you. And may the same grace locate you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us leave them because now. We are in another business of the house. Mogo. From today, she is in the department of hashering. up your hands. The Lord has seen your heart and he's coming to lift you. He's coming to bless the work of these hands. His hands. His hands. His hands. His hands are blessed. His hands. Whatever you touch with these hands will prosper. Whatever you put in these hands, Millicent, you will prosper. His hands. His hands will count dollars. His hands will transact. Transaction of millions and billions. His hands. His hands. Come on, open them up. His hands. Open these hands. These hands. These hands. You will do transactions of millions with these hands. And from today, from this womb, shall flow, shall flow the rivers. The rivers of living water. You are like a Samaritan woman. Ay, shaka bakata sata. 
You are like a Samaritan woman. Many will come and they will know Jesus through you. That anointing is upon you. Receive that in grace. You begin to tell people, come and see. Come and hear. And they will begin to follow you. Come quickly. Come also, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ. Just stand here. Lift up your hands. The devil will not destroy you and the vision that you have. You will not tamper with your life. You will not destroy the greatness that is in you. Therefore, no condition in your... Come on, everybody. Elekeza mikono yako kwa uyu. Hakuna condition. Hakuna introduction ya condition kwa maisha yako. From today, I arrest that demon. Lose his life. Wewe, wewe, wewe roho mpaya. Auna mamulaka, auna uweza. I rebuke the spirit of uh, epilepsy. I cast you. I destroy you. Ah, I declare fire. I declare fire. I declare fire. Your people are the way kukwana. I surround you. I surround you with the fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 With the fire. Of the Holy Ghost. Emmanuel, I thank God you have come. But hear the word of God. God has called you with a great call of our Father. To be a Father is a call. And you will nurture many. Have you, have you heard me? You will nurture many. Two. You are the restorer. In the family, in, your, in the lineage of your father and of your mother, you are a restorer. You restore desolate places. Desolate places. You are a restorer. And that grace is resting upon your life. Number three. You will be used by the Lord to comfort your mother. To comfort your mother. To comfort her. And whoever will see you, they will say, Blessed is the Lord. People will bless the Lord because of your life. Lift up your hands. Father, thank you because of this destiny, Lord. Thank you because of this, your son. What the devil and plant has backfired. Now, Emmanuel, you are set on a path. On a path. You are a restorer. You are a builder of desolate places. You will bring comfort and joy to many. You will father many. The call of our father. You will give counsel. You will give guidance. You will give directions. Even to the elderly. Because the call of our father. Is in you. And they will hear you. And they will bless the Lord. In Jesus name. Kaimora di mi, ta di morike, da di mera, mera, komo koma kwa. Now we get to meet, yago 
Mwangi. Come here. Before your retirement, God is setting you into a place of influence in that company. So prepare yourself for three ranks ahead of you before your retirement. Three. Number two. God is telling you arise and build. And grace of building has been released. So don't waste time. Go and build. Where you are, it's not your place to stay. You will do that a rental place to bring income. But go and begin building. God, even what you have even what maybe you have said, you will not put it in that. God will just begin to open doors of building. Go in peace. Christopher. Dadi mera wera wa moko makwa na wenge to mi ya go God is setting you above your brethren. The way he elevated Joseph. And the Lord is saying, it is because you have followed this grace diligently and with fruitness. Every Sunday, anatokanga vika kule kuna itangwa nani? Makongeni. Every Sunday. God is saying because of that, he is going to increase you. What your father never owned. God is setting you above. Above. I don't know even what you do. But God is going to bless whatever you put his hands of yours to. Remain faithful to God. Maintain oldness in your youthful days. God does not want you to have undefiled marriage. So follow the heart of God Kindly. Because you, you are shining, your star will begin to shine from your marriage level. If you make an error, if you marry wrong, you are both the plan of God. Because even what God wants to descend from you, it is a generation of wonders. So be very careful. But this is what the Lord is saying. He is setting you above your brain. Receive that grace. Receive it. Receive it. Take it. Take it in Jesus' name. Morris, come here. Hear me well. You are the one who is carrying the button, the button, the real button of the family. Do you hear me? Make sure you carry it well. Make sure you carry it well. Number two, the Lord is unlocking your mind. You will begin to understand you will begin to get things to have and divine understanding. 
And that is where the beginning begin to change. So from today, even your dreams will be influenced by the Holy Spirit of God. Number three, the favor of God. The favor of God. God did what he did in your life to show you that he is interested to make you great. He planted and positioned you where you are right now to show you that you are not ordinary. Come and pray. Father, thank you because of his life. From today, move forward, Morris. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Take the grace. Take that anointing. Favor. Sit on this young man. In the name of Jesus. Let him carry that baton, the family baton, and restore everything to honor. In Jesus' name. You can sit down. Amen. We can all have our seats. And I want us to give our sacrifices. So, those who give sacrifice in every service, we are giving everything now. Give us the service. Are we together? Those who give three times, because some of us will do it. Make sure you don't set yourself to go backward. Number two.